Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem design hash map. Basically, we want to implement the main operations of a hash map, which includes putting or inserting a value using some key, we can map it to some value. Also, we should be able to retrieve elements that are already stored. So given a key, we should be able to retrieve that element. And lastly, we should be able to remove elements based on some key value. Now, of course, we can't just use a built-in hash map, so we have to implement our own. There's a restriction that we're gonna be using, which is that on this hash map, we will have at most a thousand operations that are done. That's just based off like the test cases. So we probably won't need to store more than a thousand elements. But other than that, we'll still be implementing the main operations from scratch. So what is a hash map? Well, generally, we want to be able to map any arbitrary key. In this case, the key value is just going to be an integer. So that simplifies things for us even more. But usually we want to map a key to some value and we want to do it as quickly as we can. On average, most hash maps will implement this in constant time and we also want to be able to retrieve elements doing the same thing. The easiest way to implement hash maps and most of the time this is how they're implemented with an array and we know arrays just generally have an index and a value but we will be using the index instead as the key value. Now, normally what you want to do with that key value is map it to some index within our array. In our array, we're going to have about a thousand elements. So the valid indices are going to be starting at zero and probably going up until nine, nine, nine. So how can we take a key value? In this case, the key value is an integer and then map it to an integer between zero and nine, nine, nine. Well, the easiest way is to take that key value, let's say it's 100, and mod it by 1,000. So modding by 1,000 will always give us a value between 0 and 999. Because with 100 modded by 1,000, we'll just get 100. So any value less than 1,000, we'll just get that value. But what happens when we start getting up until that value? Well, 1,000 modded by 1,000 is just going to be 0. 1,001 modded by 1,000 is going to be 1 and so on and so on. So every value is guaranteed to be between zero and 999. So we'll have a way to map the key somewhere here. Now, another issue that can happen with hash maps is this concept of collisions. So what happens if multiple values are mapped to the same index? Like we talked about, we had 100 modding it by 1,000 will give us 100. What about 1,100? modded by a thousand that will also give us 100 so multiple values will be stored at the same key location let's say the key is a hundred so multiple values could be here how are we going to handle that well there's multiple ways one is open addressing which we won't talk about right now because it's a bit more complicated than the one I'm going to show you, which is called chaining. Chaining is pretty straightforward because just as the name implies, if we have multiple values here, let's just say the first value we were inserting was a one, and now we want another value with a different key is going to be a value two, we would just take those values and add them into a chain so we can store multiple values with a single key. I guess it's misleading to say we have multiple values stored with the same key. It's just that those multiple keys will map to the same index. They will be different keys. So I guess a better way to illustrate this would be that Let's say these are the two insertions that we did. So a key value of 100 will be mapped to one. Key value with 1100 will be mapped to two. We know both of these keys, when we mod them by a thousand, we are going to get the same index. So over here, they'll both be mapped to index 100. Now, when we actually store the value, we will store them in that linked list that we were showing earlier. So we'll store the key value 100 and we'll store the value itself, which is one. So both of those will be stored in that linked list node that we were talking about. And if we inserted another value here and we saw that, well, there's already a node stored here, doesn't matter. We just insert a new node and connect them via like a pointer, just like you would with linked lists. The value in this case, or the key is going to be 1100 in this case, and the value is going to be two. So we store the keys 
in the nodes because we don't want to lose any information. Sure, the 100 here matches the 100 over here, but the index here doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the same as the key. Like in this case, we have an 1100 stored over here. So we don't want to lose like the original key that we were using. That's why we add that to the node. We don't just rely on the index. So we just showed the put operation so far, but I bet you can tell how the get and remove operations are going to go. So with get, it's also going to be similar. We're going to take whatever key that we're given. So maybe it's 1100. We're going to mod it by a thousand. So we're going to get the index, which is a hundred. Then we're going to go through that linked list until we find the key that we were looking for, if it exists at all. So we're looking for 1100. So we're going to keep going through this linked list until we find an node that has the key of 1100, which is this node over here. So then we would return its value, which is two. Now, if we don't find a linked list node with the key that we're looking for, then I believe we just return a default value of negative one. And lastly, how would we remove a node? Well, just some pointer manipulation, which would mean we would go up until we reach the node. So maybe this is the node that we want to remove. So we'd go up until we reach the previous node and then we'd take its pointer and then set it to the next node. So maybe we have three nodes in this case. In that case, we'd remove this pointer and then set it to the next node. Or maybe there's nothing over here, in which case we'd set the next pointer equal to null and this node would basically be removed. We could delete the memory that stores this node or we could not. Usually in coding interviews, you don't really need to, but that's how this would work. Now, one last thing I wanna mention, notice how there's kind of an edge case here. What if we were removing the first node? Well, there's no previous pointer in front of that. So it would be a little awkward. We'd need additional conditions to be able to handle this case. So an easy workaround is to initialize every linked list here with like a dummy node. So we'd have a dummy node that's starting here, even though there's no nodes here, we'd still have a dummy node here. And we'd have a dummy node here that's pointing to this first real node that we have. So if we wanted to remove this, we'd just take the dummy node and set its next pointer equal to the next node, which is over here. So that's mainly it. Now, technically, the way we've written this hash map, it's not going to be constant time in every case. We could have a bunch of values that are inserted at the same index. It is possible. But on average, chaining is pretty efficient. And we know we're not going to have more than a thousand elements in our data structure. So assuming that they're evenly distributed, these operations should be pretty efficient. So now let's code it up. So the first thing I have here is my list node. We know we're going to have a key value, a real value, and a next pointer. To now get started on our hash map, we know we're going to have an array. I'm going to call it our map, but it's technically an array. And I'm going to just initialize it to be size of 1,000. So for i in range 1,000. We're going to initialize every index with a dummy node, as I kind of mentioned earlier. So we're going to create a list node for a thousand times, and then that's what the array is going to be initialized with. And that is pretty much it. Now for the put operation, there's actually two cases we have to handle. One is if we're inserting this key for the first time. In that case, we would create a new list node. But if we're not, then that means this key already exists and all we want to do is update the value of that key. First, what we want to do though is take the key and map it to the index. So we decided that we were just going to take the key and mod it by a thousand aka the length of our hash map. So this will give us the index and we're going to be needing this a few times actually. So I think it's worth putting it in its own helper function. So let's define one where we can hash some key value. Then we will return the hash of that key and we'll be needing it pretty much in all of these because this will tell us what index we should go to. And once we have this index, we want to start at the head of that linked list because we know it's going to map to some linked list. So we're going to say in this map at this index, this is going to be the start of the linked list. So I'm going to call it cur. We're going to take our current pointer and while it's non-null, we are going to continue to traverse this linked list. So we're going to set the current pointer equal to current.next. 
But there's two cases, remember. One is that we find a node. So if current dot key is equal to the key that we were given, that means this node already exists, this key already exists. So we just want to update its value. So current dot val would be set to the new value that we were passed in. And then we want to return immediately. The second case is where we will reach the end of the linked list. And at that point, we want to insert a new linked list node at the end. Now, the way our current loop is coded up, by the time we reach the end of the loop, our current pointer will be equal to null. But that's not where we want to end. We want current to be pointing at the last node. So instead of saying while current, we say while current dot next. Remember that our current will start at the first node in the linked list, which is going to be a dummy node. So when we actually check these values, we shouldn't say current dot key, we should say current dot next dot key is equal to the key that we were passed in, then we would update current dot next dot value. So now if we never find that key in our linked list, and we reach the end of this, then we know we can now insert a new list node. So I'd create a new list node with the key that we were given and the value that we were given, just like our constructor is defined up above. And we'd take this node and we'd say current dot next is null now because current dot next is null. That's why the loop terminated. So we want to set current dot next equal to this new list node. And then we don't really need to return anything. But now we can get started on our get method, which will be pretty similar to this. We just want to get the head of the linked list that this key maps to. So we'll just go ahead and copy and paste this. And what we'll be doing this time is while our current pointer is not null, we're going to check if current dot key is equal to the key that we were passed in, then we return current dot value. Otherwise, we just take the pointer and set it to the next pointer. Now, if we ever reach the end, that means we didn't find the key that we were looking for, in which case we can just return negative one. That's the default value that we want to return. And one minor change here, we probably can go ahead and take this and set it equal to dot next because we don't need to start at the dummy node in this case. We don't need to check the dummy node's value. So it makes sense to just start at the second node of that linked list. Lastly, we have our remove method. We're going to do the same thing that we did up here, but we probably do need to start at the dummy node in this case because we're going to need to do some pointer manipulation. So now we want to check if current is non-null and current.next is non-null, then we want to check if current.next, the next node's value, or rather its key, is equal to the key that we were given. If it is, that means this is the node that we're going to remove. And then after we remove, we can probably just go ahead and return. How do we remove it? And more importantly, the reason I'm using current.next in this case is because we want our current pointer to stop at the node right before we delete a node. So we want to stop at the node prior to the one that we're deleting. So then we can say current.next is going to be equal to current.next.next. .next. So we're just setting its next pointer and skipping a node. The node that we're skipping is the one that we want to delete. And this is basically us performing that deletion. We don't really need to delete the memory. It doesn't really make a difference most of the time. It doesn't make a difference on leak code. And it usually doesn't make a difference in coding interviews. So I won't do that. But lastly, here we need to set our current pointer equal to current.next. So either we'll reach the end of the loop, in which case we won't remove anything, or we will remove the node and then immediately return. So this is pretty much the entire code. It's not too bad. Luckily, we didn't need to handle the resize method. Usually hash maps are growing and as they grow, we need to double the capacity every time they exceed the current capacity or exceed some threshold. But in this case, we don't really need to do that. So I'll go ahead and run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.